In this lesson, we're going to talk about another set of filters, and namely, we're going to talk about the motion blur and also the spiral blur to kind of create movement within our objects. So believe it or not, this is a still shot of somebody driving a little dune buggy that started off looking like this, and then we added on a little bit of motion. So it looks like they're kind of driving really fast. So the background and foreground and parts of the stuff around the outside are kind of moved, and they are blurry, and they're tilted, and all this good stuff. And notice how the wheels also look like they're kind of spinning around and around, just like that, all right? Now, of course, when we are working with these, the first thing we want to do is make sure that our object is now a smart object. So we're going to go ahead and convert that because we want to be able to manipulate this after the fact and not have any destruction to the original pixels and have a little more control over our filter. All right, so let's go ahead and see how we can do that. But first of all, I just want you to see when we go over here to filter, we have a number of different blur options here, right? The Gaussian blur is probably the most popular one that people see here. You'll see this also under the blur gallery, all kinds of other ones like field blur for kind of like depth of field. Okay, spin blur, we're going to get to path blur. You're just going to see you can kind of create a path, a line, what direction you want to go to. So definitely worth experimenting. But for right now, Initially, we're just going to focus on our motion blur. So let's go ahead and choose motion blur. And now you're going to see how it's just going to automatically pop up with two options here, our angle of our blur and also the distance. Okay, so really kind of like what, what are you trying to create the story of like where they're kind of driving to? All right, so you can see if I make this go a little bit different direction, it looks like he's now going to be driving sort of upwards or that's the direction of the road or whatever it is you can have it do that okay so typically you kind of want to make it so it looks kind of realistic but if you're being kind of artistic with it or whatever it is you can kind of make it go in a different direction because my image is kind of facing at about eight to ten degrees i'm going to go ahead and make it go in that direction okay now the distance is pretty much the the degree of how much of a blur you want all right, so I can go ahead and bring this down a little bit, and you can see it's going to do that. I can bring it up, and you can see it's going to do that. Now, I'm going to play around with the kind of like nuance around this to make it so it's not going to be entirely blurry all throughout. So don't worry about it right now, but just know that because we made this into a smart object, we can very easily anytime come back and adjust this. And also because I now have the option to then just double click back on this motion blur, I always have the option to then address this again and make any modifications to it. Fantastic. So I'm super happy with that. All right. Now let's go ahead and do another blur on this. I'm going to start working with these two tires. So I'll go ahead and make sure that my layer is selected. Go over here to filter. I'm going to come down here to my blur gallery and just choose spin blur. And this just pops up automatically with something I can just kind of pop on top of something else here. You can see here where I have in the middle, I can just go ahead and select it, right? Bam. I can also, you see this out, this actually allows me to adjust how much of a spin it's going to be. And just notice I'm just clicking and dragging on that. Now that can also be adjusted here as well. This is my blur gallery. So just notice I can do that. You'll just watch it kind of go, go, go. All right. And now what I'm also going to do is just bring this in. So it just really kind of covers the tires there. Maybe you want a little more. Maybe you want a little bit less. Totally up to you. All right, let's kind of play around with that. That's pretty good. I like that. So I'm going to click OK. And now let's wait and see what we got there. Pretty cool so far, right? So it looks like, OK, he's all blurry, but his ties are spinning. Now we're getting a nice realistic effect. And you'll notice here in my Layers panel, I now have two. I have my Blur Gallery, which is this little spin blur, my spiral blur. And then I also have my motion blur. So in order to do the second tire, I got to do another one. Let's go ahead and just go back to Filter, go over here to my Blur Gallery, and then Spin Blur. And then there's my friend. I'll go ahead and bring him back inside here. All right, and I'm just going to bring this guy in just like that. And then I'll bring this up, up, up. And see how that's going to look. Not too shabby. I like it. And I'm pretty much done. Now, if you wanted to go a step further with some of these, you'll notice here that there is a secondary set of tabs. If you like, you can see here are some motion effects. If I wanted to kind of go a little bit deeper into these, right, if it works for it, right? Might not always, but you can see that sometimes it may actually add on some nice cool effects for you. But I'm just going to keep it as is. Click OK. Wait for it. And cool. Not so bad. 
Now it's maybe a little bit too pronounced, right? Because my feathering could have been nuanced a little bit more, but you know what, what I'm gonna do, instead of going back to that, which I easily could just by double clicking on this, I'm just gonna work with my masking. All right, because now we're at the place where we can actually start to nuance this a little bit more. Because I wanna see this guy, I wanna see parts of the car, I wanna be able to kind of have a little bit more kind of realism and subtlety, so it's not just kind of drowning in the effect. So now, notice how this mask is gonna be affecting every one of these little filters here. So, very easily now, how do I work with a mask? I work with the brush tool. So I'm gonna to go over to here to my brush, and then notice this is white, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose black from here. And now I'm gonna make this so it's a little bit more subtle. So my opacity is at 100%. So I'm gonna bring that down to maybe about 50, 45, something like that, and just kind of let me see this guy a little bit. Okay, and that makes a big, big difference. Let me see little bits of the car. All right, let me just kind of see some of the wheel. Okay, just some little things here you can see. All right, not too bad, All right? not kind of overwhelming us. It's like, okay, there's a little bit of realism there. Okay, and that's actually starting to look pretty good. So it looks like he's moving, you can see that, but I can actually see a person, I can see the vehicle. So I have a little bit of connection with it. Okay, whereas if it's kind of drenched inside of the filter, you can't see it too much. All right, and this looks pretty great. I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, so you know you really want to play around with all of these, right? You really want to, especially some of these other filters that you see there in our introduction to Photoshop. I showed you some other ones you can work with, especially with that depth of field options. We're going to get into what we call neural filters in a little bit. We're going to see how we can do this in maybe a little bit a slightly different way, but this gives you some more nuance, some more kind of surgical tools to work with. All right, so practice that, have fun, really amazing tools, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks, everybody. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.